Hi everyone, uh, this is the instructional video on how to convert the FD55 1.2 a spherical lens to EOS mount using the Edmica adapter kit. Uh, now, uh, what's really important about this is that uh, this is a different kit than the FD55 1.2 non-aspherical, like the, uh, the Chrome Nose and the SSC, that's a different kit. So, because this kit has to hold the, uh, the rear lens element in this using the Ed Traveler, which I'll explain. So, um, basically, what you will get, this is the, this is the lens on, a, on an old FD camera. Um, and what you're going to be wanting to do is making it fit onto an EOS camera. Um, so what you're going to get in the mail is, uh, is, is the Edmica adapter kit. Now, so the kit's going to come with everything you need to do the conversion. It's going to come with tools, uh, fasteners, and all the, all the stuff. So you should be able to do this all right with just the kit. Um, and it even has, it has the instructions for the uh, for programming chip on the back. They're pretty hard to follow, but, uh, but you, can, uh, you can always email me if you have trouble with them. Um, so basically I'm just going to do this conversion right now and I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes so that it'll fit on YouTube. Um, okay, so this is the kit that you get. Um, and the first thing you'll do uh, is you'll have a copy of the written instructions that I'm going to put on the eBay listing that you'll hopefully be following. It comes with two screwdrivers, you probably only need the, the, the Phillips one. Um, I, I include the straight edge one uh, in case some of the older lenses had a flathead uh, screw. It comes with a lens cap. Um, and so what you'll first do is you will actually take the old mount off. So uh, to, uh, to trigger it, you push the screwdriver on this little thing, on the, there's a little lever here so that you can kind of get the thing to start moving. Uh, and then you find it'll be three screws. Now these are incredibly tight. So what you're going to want to do is use a lot of downward force. Now I've taken this lens apart many times um, and uh, it's, it's pretty easy right now. So what you're going to want to do is you'll notice that this thing has a bit of a, uh, uh, edges on it. And you can use uh, pliers or, uh, or uh, something to hold it and a lot of force and twist it. But just don't strip out the, the thread uh, or, or the, the head. Now if you do, you can drill out these screws pull the thing off and then use pliers to twist them out. I'm including replacement screws. So that's not a problem if you, if you, uh, if you end up stripping a screw, it's not the end of the world. But uh, I know that the Canon used certain type of uh, adhesive lock type, Loctite type material. Um, so you gotta get the old ones out. And then, then you have to rotate it a little bit more to find the third one right here. And yeah, these are these are tough to get out. So basically, that that it takes the old mount off. Now, so take the screws and put them somewhere, like maybe in the bag, somewhere safe, so you don't lose them. In case you ever want to make the lens go back to original, you won't be reusing them for this kit. I will be including, I will be including other screws. So I've got the three screws in the original bag. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to take this uh, rear lens element and we're going to have to have it held by ours. So we have to take this extra piece out now. So we include this little tool that we made from razor blades. <laughs> the way we, we, we machined the way the razor blade, but basically it's a steel piece that you use to, there's a couple of, I don't know if you'll be able to see on the video, but there's a couple of little notches there and you basically need to put this tool into the notches. So I'm going to, you probably won't be able to see this, but uh, I'm going to basically find them and start to spin it out. And basically... Okay, move your hand away. Moving my hand away. Okay, well, so uh, once it's kind of undone, you can, you can sort of use your finger and basically very carefully let the lens fall out. Now I believe that this lens is the same on one side or the other, so it doesn't matter whether you put it in this way or that way. If you want to make sure you stay like original, maybe you're going to want to put a little piece of tape or something on the outside so that you know it's the same side and then take it off and clean it when you're done. That's probably a good idea, but I believe it doesn't matter. Okay? So now you're done with the old mount, 
Uh, maybe later you're going to want to put that screw thing back, back in there and tighten it up so that you don't lose it. But put that somewhere safe. So be very careful with this lens element. It chips really easy. I broke one. So, you know, I, I chipped it about three different times until we finally broke it when we dropped it onto the concrete floor. That's the dangers of testing so, and, and development. So there goes $1,000. Anyways, uh, at least I've got spare parts now. Um, okay, so you're holding this lens element. And I'm going to move this out of here. And I'm just going to include this blank piece of paper that came with the thing. Um, so it's a nice, friendly, safe surface for the lens element. So, so basically, I'm going to now take out the mount. Now I include uh, an extra pair so this is, the, together, this is what I call the Ed Traveler. This is what holds the rear element and also moves it slightly, which I, for reasons I'll explain in a second. So what you'll basically do is take the, this piece, it's, it's made of Delrin material, it's kind of a polymer, plastic-based material, um, and you will take this, uh, this lens element, and uh, I, you may want to get some gloves if you don't want to get it, because you have to clean it later, although you can clean it, but basically, you, you pop that element in there so that it's basically flush with flush with the top. So I'm I basically lay that down, put the element on it, and just pop it in so that it's tight, tight down. Next step is you're going to take um, you're going to take the adapter and you're going to place it on top of that element, and then finally you're going to take this the, the other portion and you're going to you're going to stick it on it. So what you're going to have to do is you'll pop it in on the top part, and then you're going to work your way around. And maybe using a fingernail, you pop the thing down until it's fully engaged. Okay, now you're going to flip it up to the top, and you're just going to make sure that everything's flush and everything seems okay. So now you may want to take the time to use a cloth and clean it nicely because you're about, especially the bottom, because you're about to, the next step ultimately you'll be putting it on the lens. So before we can put this mount onto the lens, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have a connection for the aperture control. If we would just put it on the lens right now, you wouldn't be able to stop down the aperture. So, you're going to take your same Phillips screwdriver, you're going to carefully remove these two screws that hold this little uh, stop adjustment. So this was what Canon used to, to uh, calibrate where, where the focus stop was. Now, it's very important to not lose these screws because I don't have spares for these so you really need to have those original ones and this is the piece you take off okay so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take what I call the Ed link call everything Ed something because you know it's Ed Mika adapters why not so this little piece is the Ed link and this is what's gonna allow the aperture you connect the the aperture ring on the outside with the uh, with the iris, with the thing that actually controls the aperture. So basically, you pop that on there and you re-tighten the same screws. Now basically, it's somewhere kind of in the middle of the slot and I'll explain to you soon. Don't tighten it all the way down because you're going to need to adjust it a little bit. And these screwdrivers are not the best screwdrivers, they're not magnetic or anything, so you have to kind of Pinch it with your finger and put it in and get it started. Okay, so what you're going to do with them half a little bit tightened down but not, not actually fully tightened down is you want to go to F1.2. Okay, so you want to see it, you want to see the, the iris completely open and you want to adjust it so that it just, when you, when, when you go too far, you can start to see the iris closing in. So you want to bring it back a little bit kind of finicky but you want to bring it back a little bit until it's when it's at 1.2 it's just fully open and that's and you can see it's pretty much in the middle of the slots and that right there I can see is calibrated right so then you tighten it down it doesn't need a lot of force just you don't want to strip anything and that parts done okay yep so okay uh, next step we're going to be attaching this uh, mount so what you need to do is find 
This uh, on the t near near where it says the 55, and where, where on the on the top here where it has the the marker, this this marker, that's going to be the opposite side of where you put uh, the the chip, the reporting chip. So basically, uh, you find that there's three holes. You need to line them up with this adapter, one, two, three, and it's and the chip is the opposite side. This chip is the opposite side of that mark. So you find three holes. Now I've included four screws so that if you strip one or you lose one, um, you're okay. And you can always email me and ask me for more if you manage to screw, you know, mess up more than that. These, uh, the reason on this, on this adapter we're not letting you reuse the old screws is because some of them, they were old screws, there were some that were a little bit longer and they didn't quite work. So we've redesigned this so that it only works with these replacement screws because they have a smaller head and they're a consistent shorter length. So they will, they will work on all these variations of these lenses and that is basically it. So those three screws go in Then you're going to want to tighten them up a little bit on the way around, nothing too tight. Okay, and you're basically done. Now what's really cool about this, you'll notice, uh, so that lens element's held. But it's when when I move to infinity, you'll notice that it slightly comes out. I don't know if you can. I'm going to try to hold it steady. I'm going to hold it sideways. I don't know if you can actually see it. But when I move, when it hits, uh, let's see, where is it? When when it goes to when it hits about ten, when it hits about ten uh, feet or thir or thirty feet or ten meters, you can feel the torsion getting a little bit more, and it slowly pushes out a little bit, and then it comes back. And the reason we do this is so on the on the 5D Mark II and 5D Mark III they have really fat mirrors. So we need to be able to have this lens out of the way of those mirrors and then um, as you're getting focusing farther they'll come into interference that they'll hit the mirrors uh, but don't worry I've hit my mirror hundreds of times and there's no damage to lenses or camera um, and the way you get around it is when you get into shooting targets farther away you um, you can back up a little bit. You, um, when you get into shooting targets a little bit further away you just used to live view, which of course with the 5D Classic is a problem, but um, I don't have a, a, a way to hack into the 5D firmware and, and give you a live view or anything which will overcome that issue. So basically, now it fits on a, on a 5D Mark II and Mark III, and you're able to shoot it. And just when you start to feel the torsion getting a little, little bit more, you, uh, you switch to live view and you're able to shoot to infinity. So that's how you adapt your 55 1.2 SSE spherical and AL lenses um, to modern DSLRs. It doesn't have any interference issues, I believe, with any of the 1D series bodies um, or any of the old film bodies or, or any crop bodies. So a 7D, a Rebel, a 50D, a 60D, all of those will work perfectly with this. Um, and of course, if you're using it for high def video, you're already using it with the mirror up and with, with, uh, with a 5D2, 5D3, you wouldn't even notice the issue. So. This is, uh, that's basically it. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to more uh, adapters that are in the pipeline for uh, Canon manual lenses. Um, I think the next one's gonna be the 85 1.2 spherical and then a whole bunch for the FDN mounts. So thanks and have a great day.